one and nothing more. There has to be an answer. You heard that all communications are ended outside the continental limits? Yes, I heard. That leaves it in our laps. It's Splendid Isolation from deep inside the New York City Forbidden Zone with your psychic scarred host, Dave Bledsoe. Splendid Isolation. When I uh, left the military after about a decade, I had what one might think of as a medium sized case of post traumatic stress disorder of the uh, first responder variety. I mean, I didn't know that at the time because I was in my 20s and considered myself very manly and also very bulletproof. And it took me years to deal with that issue. I still struggle with it from time to time, like most people do. One of the notable effects of my particular reaction to PTSD were and are stress dreams. And they put me back in the military in real time, meaning I'm fat, 50, and utterly unprepared and desperately trying to explain to anyone that will listen that a horrible mistake has been made and I should not be there. I had a therapist explain it to me once that these kind of dreams are pretty common and it's our mind's way of reacting to stress that's utterly beyond our control, conflicting with our training to always be in control of stressful events. Right now, I'm having these dreams a lot which is fine. I understand the why and how to deal with them. What I find offensive is when my stress dreams show me crammed into a uniform that is way too small for my fat ass. It's bad enough I'm having the dreams, but also my subconscious has to throw shade about my weight. Fuck you, Freud. I don't need your judgmental shit right now, all right? But here inside, you can see stuff starting to fray on the edges. I'm going to try and say this as woke as I can, But right now, the homeless folks of the city are kind of at loose ends. There's as many as 80,000 homeless people in New York City, not all of them on the streets. With COVID, a lot of people who might otherwise be in shelters or hospitalized are on the streets. Just just in a normal night, your average Wednesday in non-COVID times, 4,000 human beings are sleeping on the streets. And a lot with the virus, a lot of people who otherwise might be in a shelter aren't in them because they are terrified and they feel safer on the streets. You can tell. In Harlem, which has always had a higher number than normal number of street people, there are huge numbers of them compared to just your average day. They're roaming around with nowhere to go, no one to help, and they're just trying to get by. They need help. They aren't getting it. Just this week alone, I've seen numerous stories of people wandering onto the subway tracks, just wandering down the tunnels. Fewer trains, fewer MTA staff, or fewer cops means they can just walk into the tunnels anytime they want. I read a story in the Post I bet a guy sleeping blissfully on the tracks in one of the busiest stations in the city. He was safely removed. But all of this has given the city a very bad old days vibe. Or to my eyes, a very escape from New York kind of veneer. A local story ran through the press on Monday saying the city was about to start digging mass graves in the parks and burying people ten at a time. That's not a 1980s vibe. That's a 1780s vibe. Turns out the story, as you might expect, was wildly exaggerated. The mass graves won't be in the parks. Come on, that's crazy. No, the mass graves will be on Hearts Island, the city's potter's field, where identified, unidentified, and indigent bodies are buried by Rikers inmates. So we can all breathe a big sigh of relief at that. Mass graves in Central Park would be very untidy and kind of a buzzkill. On the brighter side, well not brighter, slightly less pitch black side, it appears the death rate is leveling off. Since the weekend, we've had fewer people dying per day than the preceding weeks. It uh, hasn't been long enough yet to be sure, but it's possible things are easing a little as our social distancing is starting to slow the infection rate. We're going to need more data. But of course, at the same time as this news came out, there was also the story that upwards of 200 people a day are dying at home, up from 20 to 30 people a day in what we now think of as, you know, like normal times. We don't have the stats on whether these are all COVID deaths, but logic dictates they're at least COVID related as people are not going to the hospital for things they might have before the dark times. Also, you know, we aren't really checking at all to see if they're virus related. We just put them in the truck where they'll await shipment to their mass grave on Hearts Island. 
Supplies of desperately needed equipment for healthcare workers seem to be improving, but the system's still hopelessly fucked. For that, you can thank plastic boy Jared Kushner, who wants you to know that this whole national stockpile thing isn't a big supply of things the federal government bought to help time in times of national emergency that could be sent to places most in need. No, greedy citizen. It's a federal stockpile to be used by, I don't know, fuck, I guess, Immigration and Customs Importments? I, I don't know. If this ever ends, Jared and Ivanka best not think they're coming back to New York. <laughs> they are. They're wildly mistaken. That little fucking Ken doll and his Barbie-ass wife are persona non grata in the city for fucking ever. Or at least until the rich folks forget and start rewriting history of all of this to make them out to be heroes. That's probably starting about uh, right now. Speaking of shitbags in Washington, what the fuck is the deal with Donnie Dipshit and his hom homicidal ideation over hydrox... Yeah, this is going to be fun to say throughout the rest of this. Hydroxychloroquine? It seems his fanatical loon of an advisor, Peter Navarro, who is not a fucking doctor, has decided based on no evidence and magical thinking that we should all be popping this pill and heading back to work. The doctors, like Fauci, like Fauci and Burks, take a more reasoned and rational approach, saying we should do, I don't know, some crazy shit like clinical trials to see if the drug works before we start doling it out to the masses. The drug, an antimalarial, and also, and this is a fucking truth, and it also works for lupus and rheumatoid arthritis for reasons not at all understood. Yeah, we know it works. We just don't know why. It's been used in a couple of very small, uncontrolled trials with some helpful effects in some places, but no one knows if it is actually useful against COVID. All the people who actually know shit are saying is that let's not start touting, touting it as the cure because people are already taking their fucking fish tank cleaner, which contains the compounds, and dying. Also, the drug has side effects, including cardiac effects that make using it, requ using it require tight monitoring and controls. And, and it can make you batshit crazy. It's a document and legit side effect, and I can personally attest to its precursor, chloroquine, having deleterious mental health side effects. I took it for three months in the mid-90s, and I had them. From the documentation, it says, quote, mental symptoms of confusion, disorientation, ideas of persecution, agitation, outburst of violence, loss of interest, feeling sad, suicidal ideas, and impaired insight. Check, 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 check. Yeah, I fucking had them all. And they went away when I went off the drug. That drug almost got me booted out of the military, though at the time, they just thought I was being an asshole. But I assure you, it was the drug. I was an asshole in totally different ways, but I've never been a violent asshole. If you're at all curious as to why the orange child god and his sycophantic ass lackeys are pushing the drug, let me read to you a little bit from the New York Times. Quote, Mr. Trump first expressed interest in hydroxychloroquine a few weeks ago, telling associates that Mr. Ellison, a billionaire and founder of Oracle, had discussed it with him. At the time, Dr. Mehmet Oz, host of television's The Dr. Oz Show, was in touch with Mr. Trump's advisor about expedizing approval to use of the drug for coronavirus. Mr. Giuliani has urged Mr. Trump to embrace the drug, based in part on the advice of Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, a self-described simple country doctor who has become a hit on conservative media after administering a cocktail of hydroxychloroquine and the antibiotic azithromycin and zinc sulfate. Oh, fucking great. A simple Russian country doctor and Dr. fucking Oz, who is somehow actually a doctor, but also not. <laughs> if they say so, oh, it must be true. And not at all. Some rich fucker tight with Trump that owns stock in the manufacturer is whispering bullshit in his ear. Oh, wait. Also from the New York Times, some associates of Mr. Trump have financial interest in the issue. San Onofi's largest shareholders include Fisher Asset Management, the investment run company run by Ken Fisher, a major donor to Republicans, including Mr. Trump. A spokesman for Mr. Fisher declined to comment. Another investor in both Sanofi and Milan, another pharmaceutical firm, is Invesco, a fund previously run by Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary. Mr. Ross said in a statement Monday he was not aware that Invesco has any investments in companies producing the drug, nor do I have any involvement in the decision to explore this as a treatment, unquote. As of last year, Mr. Trump reported that his three family trust each had investments in Dodge and Cox Mutual Fund, whose largest holding was the drug manufacturer Sanofi, unquote. When you see stupid, you will find the money. Because your lives are not important, your dollars are. Trump, while being incompetent, 
is his main thing, but when being incompetent isn't enough, always remember he's also evil. To be clear, the medicine might be of use. It might not. But when you listen to a greedy, evil moron over a doctor, it is by definition bad medicine. And no doctor is going to cure his disease. Support for this podcast comes from Microsoft Teams. The world has changed, and Microsoft Teams is there to help us stay connected. Teams is the safe and secure way to chat, meet, call, and collaborate. To learn more, visit Microsoft.com slash Teams. Support for this podcast comes from BMO. Should these uncertain times alter your approach to managing treasury cash? What four strategies can help optimize returns? Unpredictable times call for expert insights. Read the article, Corporate Treasury, Optimizing Liquidity in an Uncertain Environment by James Santoro, Managing Director, Liquidity Specialist. Get his expert take at bmocm.com slash COVID. That's bmocm.com slash COVID. Corporate Treasury. We work here. All right, that's a wrap on episode three from here inside the Forbidden Zone. I am Dave Bledsoe, documenting for posterity and my mental health in a podcast extra. Stay inside, stay safe, wash your hands, and if you are taking medication that causes you to want to fight eight or nine dudes, any one of whom could beat the shit out of you, and that is not normal behavior for you, check in with your doctor about your meds, because your commander and first sergeant will never, ever believe that, that you were fucking reacting to the meds, and also, you'll have fat stress drinks in your middle age. Wash your hands, and see you next week. Spend